In this video, we're going to be um, learning a little bit about linear speed and angular speed. So let's start with linear speed. Linear speed is the um, measure of how fast something is moving. And in our case, we're not going to look at how fast they're moving on a straight road or anything like that. We're going to look at how fast an object is moving around a circle. So if I draw a nice circle here, and I take a look at a point on the circle, and let's call this point B, and then that point starts moving around the circle, and it ends up at P, how fast did that point move around the circle? Well, we call that velocity in physics, so we're gonna use the same variable. We're gonna use V for velocity. And since our point is traveling around um, in a circular motion, uh, we can state that our velocity of our point is just the measure of the arc length over the time it took that point to move through that arc length. We can come up with another formula because we do know how to calculate arc length in terms of the radius of a circle. So let's draw our radius here. Our radius and the angle in radians our arc length is measured by r theta, or theta r, however you want to say that. Um, our arc length is measured by r times theta, and that theta is measured in radians over the time that it took that point to travel that arc length. All right, so linear speed is just a rate, just like it is when we get in a car and we travel down a highway or down a road. Sometimes we're going 25 miles per hour, sometimes we're going 65 miles per hour. So it is a rate. Uh, distance, our arc length, which is measured in distance, is measured typically in miles, kilometers, centimeters, inches, yards, or feet. The time that something takes to move a distance is typically measured in hours, days, weeks, years, months, seconds, or minutes. So those are the different ways that you can measure your distance and time. And since it's a rate, we would always use some measure of distance over some measure of time, like miles per hour or feet per second or kilometers per week. So that is linear speed of an object moving in a circular fashion. Next, we're gonna take a look at angular speed. What is the definition of angular speed? Angular speed is a little bit different of a concept. It is how fast the angle is actually changing over time. So if we draw our point B again, and we've got a point P moving over time, how fast did this angle change? How many radians did it move in a given time unit? So maybe we wanna look at radians in a second. How many radians did point P move um, in a second? So we're really looking at how the angle POB is changing over time. Well, when we're looking at angular speed, we are looking at using the variable omega, and we're gonna use a lowercase omega um, for, to represent our angular speed. And since it is how fast the angle measure is changing given time, the formula is theta over t. Well, angles are measured in, in a couple of different ways. We've measured angles in the past using degrees. We just recently learned how to measure angles in radians. We've also seen angles measured in revolutions or orbits, um, which means that it, we're looking at how many times an object travels completely around the circle. Again, time can be measured in hours, days, weeks, years, months, seconds, or minutes. So our angular speed is also a rate. Um, and that rate is typically measured in radians. Radians per some time unit, like radians per day, radians per year, radians per hour or second. Um, that does not mean that you can't measure angular speed in degrees or in revolutions per time. Depending on the problem that you're working, they may ask you for revolutions per hour or they may ask you for degrees per minute. 
Uh, but for the most part, if it does not specify a particular dimension to be measured in, you should always represent your angular, your angular speed in radians per a given time unit. So this should be measured in radians if the problem that you're working does not specify. So let's go back to linear speed because now we have a definition for theta over t. There is another formula for linear speed that we can use. If you take a look at this formula right here, theta over t can be replaced with angular speed now. So we have a new formula for linear speed um, that we can use. It would be our radius times our angular speed. So we actually have three formulas for linear speed. So let's work two fairly simple problems um, to see how some of these formulas work. The first problem we're going to look at, and I have all of my formulas at the top, is given a radius of 30 centimeters, so we have a circle that has a radius of 30 centimeters, the angular speed at which an object is moving around that circle is pi over 10 radians per second, and the time that this object moves for is four seconds. So if the point P is traveling on this circle, find the angle made by P in time T. So what angle was made by P in time T? So we have a formula that we can use. We have our angular velocity and we know our angular velocity is our angle over time. We have two of those variables solved for. We have our omega and we have t. And that's one of the reasons I chose this formula in order to solve for my angle. So let's go ahead and replace omega or our angular speed with what they gave us pi over 10, and that is going to equal our angle, which that's what we're being asked to find, over time, which is 4 seconds. So if I cross multiply, I get 4 pi equals 10 theta, and when I solve for theta, I end up with 2 pi over 5, and in this formula, our theta is measured in radians. Radians per, what was our time, or, well, I guess we don't have a time unit if we're just looking for an angle. So we're just left with two pi over five radians that this point travels through in four seconds. Now it's asking us to find the distance traveled by P in time t. So distance around a circle is really arc length. So we are looking for arc length and we have a radius, we have an angular speed, and we have time. So if I take a look at my formulas above, since I have to look for my arc length, which is the distance the point traveled in time t, I would use the formulas, I, I think I'm going to pick s over t and set that equal to omega r. Okay, I've got four things I can choose from in the linear velocity formulas. I can set two of them equal and then solve for the missing variable. So this is the guy we need to solve for, so let's plug in all of our information. S over four seconds equals our, um, our velocity, angular velocity is pi over 10, and we're gonna multiply that by our radius, which is 30. So if I solve for s, this is going to reduce to 3 pi. 
I have s over 4 seconds equals 3 pi, and now I have a distance of 12 pi centimeters that my object traveled. Now it says find the linear speed of P, our linear speed. Linear speed is V, and I need to set it equal to something that we have or something that we were given. And so I think what I'll do here is since I have a nice formula for linear speed and we were given omega and we were given our radius, I think I'll take my angular velocity or angular speed and multiply it by the radius that we were given, 30 centimeters. And that gives me three pi radians per second. Oh, not radians, I'm sorry. Three pi centimeters, we're traveling in centimeters, centimeters per second. So I've calculated all of the answers that they have asked for. There are other ways that we could calculate those too. There's not just one way to do it, but this is a nice, concise way to work this problem. So now let's take a look at one more example before we're done with this video. It says, find the time it took P to move through an arc length of six pi on a circle with radius two centimeters traveling at an angular velocity of pi over four. So we have our angular velocity of pi over four radians per second. We have an arc length S of six pi centimeters, and we have a radius of two centimeters. And they're asking us for the time. So when I take a look at these formulas, I notice I have two formulas, this one right here, and this one right here, where I have S, I have omega, and I have R, and I have the variable that we're looking for. So I'm gonna use S over T equals omega R to solve this problem. So I have six pi centimeters over T, which is what we're looking for, equals pi over four times our radius, which is two. So when I simplify this, I get six pi over T equals pi over two. And when I cross multiply, I get 12 pi equals pi times t, and when I solve for t, I get t equals 12. And since my angular speed was measured in seconds, this is 12 seconds.